Well, two teams in this first of a three game series, both needing a win. They've been in tough times of late. The Rockies have lost 11 of 13, the Padres 11 of 12. Something's got to turn around as the Padres back home, thank goodness. And tonight's Rockies lineup is brought to you by Hyundai. And you won't see Tulowitzki, Cargo Gonzalez, or Fowler, the three top hitters, along with Michael Kadire. So Kadire's going to have to shoulder the load behind Dickerson and LeMahieu. Then Willine Rosario, he has been troublesome for the Padres. Good power for the catcher. Todd Hilton, the great veteran. Nolan Arenado, an outstanding young third baseman. Tyler Colvin will bat seventh. Jonathan Herrera hit his first home run of the season yesterday in a defeat against Arizona. Tyler Chatwood on the mound. He's a good hitter by the way Chadwick. The defense of the Padres brought to you by the Aramco group has Quinton in left Amarista in center and Will Venable in right field Headley Cabrera Forsyth and Guzman around the horn and Rene Rivera makes his first start since being called up from Tucson replacing the injured Yasmani Grandal. Well, let's take a look at our scouting report brought to you by Jaguar of San Diego and he always has to Worry about the walks for Edison Volquez. That is so important. The last two starts, only two walks, but aggressive early in the counts. That'll help him out to get to that devastating changeup and that big breaking ball that he likes to strike guys out with. At Petco this year, he's three and four, and against Colorado, lifetime three and five. Well, we go from the 90s and heat and humidity in Boston and Washington D.C. And Chamber of Commerce, 69 degrees in San Diego. What a brother, fresh of fresh air right there, yeah. 69 degrees. And Bud Black uh, against the Rockies. There's his record. Of course, uh, San Diego starting slowly against this team. Were swept in Colorado and then lost all three games here at Petco early in the season. Then they split the last time around. Phil Cuzzy calling the balls and strikes with Chris Guccione. Ron Culpa and crew chief Tom Hellion for the series. Rockies 42 and 47, five and a half behind Arizona. The Padres 40 and 49, despite the tough road trip just experienced. They're just seven and a half out. Walt Weiss, first year as skipper of the Rockies, popular guy in his own uh, clubhouse, but also around the league. Good guy. Most of them are they really they wouldn't be a uh, manager of their team. Again a lineup without Troy Tulowitzki. Cargo Gonzalez who leads the National League in home runs with 24. And Dexter Fowler who just ate up the Padres early in the year. So they're without 50 home runs those three alone. Maybe the Padres can take advantage of that uh, skimpy lineup. Well, that's exactly what they have to do, Dick. They have to take advantage of that, and it rides on Edison Volquez's shoulders. He's got to go for that first pitch, be a very aggressive, and limit those walks. Left fielder Corey Dickerson for uh, Cargo, and he takes ball two. 24 years of age from Macomb, Mississippi. He's an eighth round pick of the Rockies three years ago. Just had 28 at bats, five hits. Raw rookie. And not a good start. 3 and 0. Well, something to watch is Rene Rivera knows Edison Volquez, but they haven't worked too many times together. They were in spring training together, so they know everything about each other. But Grandal got very comfortable with Edison Volquez and vice versa. And on four pitches, Dickerson is aboard. Exactly what the doctor did not order. D.J. LeMahieu, second baseman, hit second. Mark Grant taking a few days off. Well deserved. Well deserved. The season is relentless for the players and for those who follow the teams. We all need to go off into the woods and take a deep breath. LeMahieu having a good year, 279. Came over from the Cubs. There's a strike. Traded for Ian Stewart, who really has not been able to contribute much for Chicago. They got LeMahieu and Tyler Colvin, who's in the lineup tonight in that two for one swap with Chicago. 
We saw Ian Stewart signed a minor league deal with the Dodgers. So they just gave up on him, did Chicago. Fly ball to right. Venable eases under it for the first down. And that brings up Michael Kadire. He had a 27 game hitting streak uh, that ended here in July. That's the longest streak in the majors this year. And hitting a solid 337, and that earned him a ticket as a reserve to the All Star game. And well deserved for that. You know, Michael Kadire, just the presence he has, especially with this organization, just an added element inside the clubhouse and on the field. Hit only 260 last year, 337 this season. That's on the outside corner. Here are the longest hitting streaks this year. Kadire owning the longest. David Fries, former Padre property with a 20 game streak. Scudero, Carpenter, Hanley Ramirez. One out, one on. And same spot with a fastball as he's painting that outside corner. Well, talking about Walt Weiss to the manager earlier and before batting practice, he beamed when you met, mentioned Michael Kadire and the reason for that, what he's meant to this organization as a leader, and also you see the talent. He's putting up numbers. Ooh, tried again, and uh, that could have been called strike three. See from our Fox tracks by Southland Technology right on that edge. Be interesting to see how Phil Cuzzy calls the strike zone if it's a hitter strike zone. But that's right on the edge. One ball, two strikes. Infield back looking for a ground ball double play chance. And the count two and two is that one taken low. So the Rockies in the midst of a 10 game road trip that'll Send them right to the All Star break. They were in Arizona over the weekend, lost all three, were outscored 22 to 2. Three games here, and then they'll finish with four against the Dodgers up in LA. Kadair gets into a lot of long counts, chops that one. That's a very tough play for Headley, and he can't make it. Throws back to second base, hoping to catch. The runner Dickerson taking a turn. That didn't work either. And an infield hit for Kadire. Well, you can see Chase Headley smiling, but Ron Culpa, the second base umpire, that's the reason why it deflected off Ron Culpa's back. No one expected the throw to be there. Right in the wallet. You can see Chase Headley with that arm action, and then right. <laughs> Off the backside, Ron Culpa. That's the reason why you see that smile. Uh, he'd be the first to admit that's his better half. So those thoughts of bloopers—they creep in your head right off the bat. <laughs> yeah, we'll able to see that one on the late-night sports shows. So, Willine Rosario, watch out. He's had <laughs> terrific success against Volquez. Five for twelve and two of the five home runs. Breaking ball doesn't quite snap into the strike zone. Well, for Rosario, this is a double play candidate. You got to make your pitch if you're Edison Volquez. That down and away fastball. As he likes to pull the baseball. 13 home runs. It seems he's hit half of those against San Diego. Ooh, that ball's a shot into the gap in left center field. Clinton trying to cut it off. Gets it before the warning path, but one run will score. And here comes Kadire, and he's in, and it's a 2 0 lead. Rosario does it again to the Padres. A two run double. Chasing Dickerson, the leadoff walk, comes around to score. Boy, that'll haunt you and haunt you over and over again. Kadire for a 34 year old legs can get around the bases. Well, you can also see that location. Rene Rivera looking for it down and away, and it leaks over the middle of the plate. Rosario poses as he swings. That's because it's perfect balance and a good swing. Rockies up two. And still a chance for more as Todd Hilton steps in with the runner at second and fouls it away. 
Well, it's a tough inning. You walk one man and then you make a good pitch and Kadair smothers it a swinging bunt single and then the shot off the bat of Rosario. Not the numbers that you're typically used to seeing for Todd Helton. 242 average, only six home runs on the season. Well, every time we see Edison Volquez out there, we're always going to monitor his body language. He's not locating, gets very frustrated himself. He's got to stay in the moment. Lifetime 318 hitter working on Hall of Fame numbers. Fouled into the glove. Rivera. Two balls, two strikes. Well, 94 on that fastball. Good velocity. That's the pitch that Todd Helton did not miss too many times earlier in his career in Colorado. Rosario with his 44th and 45th runs batted in on at second base, one out. And that looked pretty good. Count goes full. Elton, former University of Tennessee star, backup quarterback. Peyton Manning, 40 years old next month. What a career. Padres knew he was good, they selected him. But he didn't sign. Went to college instead. And he walks. So we talked about Volquez when he's on. He doesn't give free tickets. And only walked a couple of men the last two outings combined. He's walked two in the first inning. And that'll earn a visit from Darren Bolsey. Well, we talked about at the top of the show. The two walks in his previous two starts. Two already tonight. That's the reason why Darren Balsey going to. Make a trip to the mound. Just get him back on plane. Rockies uh, primarily because they were 6 and 0 against the Padres in April. Out of the gate uh, impressively but have faded since. And here in July they've won only one game. The Padres looking for their first July win. So Helton joins Rosario with one out and here's. The outstanding rookie third baseman Nolan Arenado. He looked really good up in the last series in Colorado. Had a walk off base hit. Well, defensively, so impressive from a younger player to be that impressive defensively this early. They're very excited about this young man. He takes some pretty good hacks. Breaking ball for a strike. When he talked to Walt Weiss about this young man. He said he wants to be in the moment, he wants to be at there at the end of the game. And get that big hit. That says something about his mentality for this game. Only 22 years of age. One and one. He was drafted in the second round four years ago as an 18 year old. From Newport Beach. Born there. Now lives uh, up the freeway at Lake Forest. Chopped to short. Not hit hard. Can they turn two? Yes, they do. Six, four, three. A double play. But on a two run double, Willene Rosario has given the Rockies an early two run lead.
many runs as they scored against Arizona in the three game series. They get two tonight in the first inning. Here's Buddy Black's lineup. It's brought to you by Toyota, Cabrera, Amarista, Headley. As they're loaded with left handed hitters, Carlos Quinton and Guzman and Forsyth, the exception in the middle. Will Venable bat seventh, Rene Rivera, right handed hitter. Hit 343 at Tucson was the leading hitter in the entire minor league system for the Padres. And now makes a major league start against this Rockies defense brought to you by Hyundai Dickerson Colvin and Kadire in the outfield. There and Herrera left side LeMahieu and Helton at second and first with Rosario behind the plate for Tyler Chatwood high school at Redlands California. Signed by the Angels five years ago. He was a second rounder. Cabrera. Leading average at 294 for the Padres. Still trying to get that swing back in the groove uh, that he enjoyed before the injury. And he bounces one to the left side. Herrera. Who just did get him. That was close. Well, let's take a look at the 23 year old right hander from Colorado, Ch Tyler Chatwood. And you got to capitalize on hitters' counts, and they have to. He is very proud of his fastball, and he's going to get fastballs in fastball counts. And the big hits for the Padres, when they were coming through with those two out hits, it was contagious. They need to look to do that for W's. Alexi Amarista. yesterday in Washington, had a three hit game, two singles, and a two run homer. His fifth home run of the season. School's out, and uh, lots of folks bringing the sons and daughters out to watch baseball. We hope you'll join us tomorrow night. It's uh, dog days of summer. We're going to have hundreds of dogs here, as well as it's our first Taco Tuesday. Lots of good things happening in this uh, final home stand before the All Star break. We'll tell you about them as we progress. Line drive to the second baseman, LeMayhew. So Amarista hits it on the nose, but right to the glove of the second baseman. Chase Headley. Well, let's take a look at Alexi Amarista with that breaking ball down. What a beautiful swing. That's why you can tell he's hot. Taking swings on a breaking ball there, a fastball hitter. Good to see Alexi swinging the bat. Headley in Washington, D.C. Yesterday had two doubles in a single and uh, had a single in the Saturday game, a home run on the Friday night game, and a double. So he uh, reaped the riches in D.C. Well, you can see they're going to get some, the heavy dose of fastballs tonight. Strike three call three pitches and Headley reluctantly will go for his glove and head to third base to the second two nothing Colorado.
anticipated bad news for Buddy Black confirmed today as an official MRI revealed that Yasmani Grandal will need reconstructive surgery in that right knee. Buddy Black said he'll wait a couple weeks for the swelling to go down, then have the surgery, and the recovery process can last anywhere from 9 to 12 months. But on a bright note for the Padres, Yonder Alonso tonight making his first start in Tucson. So the Padres could get one of their guys back, and that is a good thing at this point, isn't it, Dick? Yeah, it is indeed. To get that uh, initial infield back together with uh, Jed Jerko close to returning as well. He's about to go on a rehab assignment. Cabrera's back. Cameron Maven will be much later. Colvin hitting just 162, and the breaking ball hangs high, one and two. There's Cameron working on that knee. But uh, you'll not find any of the Rockies shedding tears for the Padres. How about not having Tulowitzki, 347, 16 homers? No cargo, 304, 24 homers leading the National League. No Fowler, 10 home runs. 50 home runs and 140 RBIs, not in the lineup from those three tonight. That's a great point. No one's going to feel sorry for yourselves now going through the season and the rigors. He knew it. Strike three. That'll bring up Jonathan Herrera. 27 year old shortstop. Now take a look at the movement. Coming back action starts on your hip. And comes in as a strike. Rene Rivera closing his eyes as he's catching that. <laughs> you got to love that. Why not? All those ricochets off foul tips. <laughs> I'd be closing my eyes too. Herrera, utility man, filling in until Tulowitzki can return. The word is that both uh, Gonzalez and Tulowitzki are in a rehab assignment and will uh, rejoin the club not in this series but for the Dodgers on uh, Thursday. Ooh, there you go. There you go. That's why he's. <laughs> Closing his eyes. You know when you sleep, Dick, and you have a ball thrown at you, and you jerk. That's what happens all the time. <laughs> and if I was a catcher, I'd probably get more of those. Oh, that's right. When you're on a plane, you're sleeping. Just a little sound, man. You just do the. No one yeah, no one likes twitchers. Sharply hit and by Guzman. Herrera with a single to right field with one out. And that'll bring up the pitcher. Tyler Chadwood and beware of Chadwood. He's seven for 21, hitting 333. Well, the 0 2 location of the pitch. Good effort by Guzzi. That ball was by him. Chadwood as a senior in uh, Red, Redlands, uh, California, East Valley High School. And there's a hit and run. Cabrera was able to break it, not get the runner. So they send the runner. That's to stay out of the double play and a little hit and run. And by the time Cabrera could fire across, Chadwood racing up the line with an infield hit. Well, Dick, you talked about being athletic. Tyler Chatwood pulling back and slashing. Nevis Cabrera takes a little peek at second base. Tyler Chatwood gets down the line hustling earning that single. You wonder if uh, Cabrera had fired immediately if he would have gotten Chatwood then maybe not. He clearly was a uh, step beyond the bag when the throw arrived so two on with one out here in the second. And the Rockies already in front two nothing. Go to the top of the order and Corey Dickerson he walked to lead off the game and of course came around to score. Highest average with runners in scoring position. The Rockies, they've got some money hitters, but how about the Cardinals? 337 when they have men in scoring position. Yeah, that's so impressive. Phenomenal year for the St. Louis Cardinals, especially their offense. Hesitate to bring it up, but the uh, Padres uh, had a terrible time in Washington and runners in scoring position four for 35. Well you can see Chase Headley on that play with a fake bunt. He is charging to field the bunt. That's the reason why Everett Cabrera had a peak towards second base in case that runner was going to round second base. Tyler Chatwood made that play a little bit difficult getting down the line. Well executed by the Rockies. 
two and one to Dickerson. A 179 hitter, but Volquez couldn't throw him a strike to start the game. It cost him a run as he came around, as did Kadire after an infield hit on the sharp double by Rosario to left center. One out, first and second. Pitching to Dickerson like he's leading the league. Well, that's what happens when you overthrow your breaking ball. Comes right out of your hands. He just doesn't look like he's in good rhythm right now. You saw the ratio, balls to strikes, 18 to 17 right now. That's not going to get it done. Edison Volquez has to get in a better rhythm. Eight pitches to Dickerson, only one strike. There you go. Fastball challenged him. Full count. Now check out the action on this pitch. Right on the edge. See that late movement? Arm side run. Edison Volquez has the stuff. Everyone talks about it. It's electric at times. But when he has to fight himself, it's how you get out of it is important. Dickerson has to be looking for another fastball, wouldn't you think? Got to go fastball away, down and away. High fly ball, back of short, angling out as Cabrera to the foul line. Two away. So Volquez dug his way out of that 3 1 jam and gets him to pop up. Uh, Darren Balsley preaches down and away with the fastball, making a pitch. You can see Corey Dickerson getting out in front of that. That's velocity. Sometimes you have to cheat as a hitter. That down and away fastball will produce those pop ups. LeMahieu fly to right field his first time. Young man delivering with men in scoring position. First and second occupied with two outs. A good breaking ball right there. First pitch strikes is a lot you can do off of 0 1 that you can't do 1 0. Herrera at second, the pitcher Chatwood at first, two outs. LeMahieu, a talented collegiate, played for Louisiana State University. He's just 25. Bayou Tigers have had some good teams the last 10 years. High fly ball shallow in left center. Cabrera and Amarista. Amarista calls him off and makes the play. So a couple of hits, but they're left stranded. It'll be Quentin Guzman, Forsyth, bottom of the second.
The Padres come up in the bottom of the second inning against Tyler Chatwood, the 23 year old right hander. And there are a lot of things that are tough to figure, but wouldn't you think that Chatwood would have a better record pitching in front of his home crowd? Well, he's two and one, both home and away, but look at his ERA on the road 0.82. He's just not allowing much of anything and 218 batting average uh, in road games. Yeah, Dick, to add to that, only two starts against the NL West on the road, 2 and 0 oh with a 0 0.00 ERA. Very aggressive. Young man, especially with the fastball, and the Padres have to take that away from him. He came over from the Angels in the trade that sent catcher Chris Ionetta, Ionetta to uh, the Halos. And it looks as if the Rockies got themselves an outstanding arm. Just 23. Carlos Quinton, he's had a good month and a week, five weeks where he's. Uh, Hit at a 350 pace. 93 just misses. Raising his average up from 178 to 277. Well, with Chatwood, he's going to bury that fastball, but it's going to sit around 93. Line drive caught by the third baseman Arenado. So that's four outs for Chatwood. Two of them line drives caught by his infielders. Well, let's take a look at how Tyler Chatwood. Going to attack these hitters. You see Carlos Quinton after that line drive. First pitch, fastball away, just misses. And then looked like just a little bit of off speed, maybe a two seamer. It's off the barrel, Carlos Quinton, but good line drive stroke by Carlos. Chet, Chetwood has uh, four outs on 10 pitches, nine of them strikes. There's a ball to Guzman. Hope he can carry that hot bat from the road trip uh, back home. Breaking ball, a real tight curveball. Yeah, good curveball, good changeup. He won't throw the changeup to right handers. It's going to be curveball slider along with that fastball. Up the middle, Herrera up deep behind second to throw him out. Good play by Herrera. Five up, five down, and Forsyth the batter. Well, you take a look at the pitching sequence. The Jesus Guzman fastball down, good breaking ball right there. Jesus Guzman gets in the hitter's count. Then it's it's that two seamer fastball, 2-0 count. You're still going to get a fastball, but that has to be elevated. Used a little more movement with that fastball. Logan Forsyth hitting in the sixth spot in the order. Ninety three mile an hour strike. This is a long count for <laughs> Chadwood. He hasn't thrown more than three pitches to any hitter thus far, but this will be the fourth to Forsyth, two and one. He likes to work quickly, too. And three and one first three ball count. That'll be a challenge for the Padre hitters to slow him down. That's the game within the game stuff that you have to have. It's a gamemanship. You're going to have to slow down, go on your own pace as a hitter. And ball four. First base runner and Tyler Chatwood now for the first time will have to work from the stretch. And Dick just explaining that with Logan Forsyth taking a walk there, you have to step out. Go on your own pace because it's uncomfortable for the pitcher to stay on the rubber. He wants to go. Will Venable tied for the club lead in home runs with those 10 with Carlos Quinton and has had exceptional success hitting home runs here at Petco. That Jack Dick uh, shortening the fences and right. They felt at the time doing a extensive research that the one hitter that would be helped most for the Padres would be Venable. Let's see it here. A good pass. That fastball count. Staying on it. That's the Jack Deck right there. What a beautiful sight. Talked to some people that sat out there for one game. Beautiful sight lines. 
They did a great job. Almost tapped the right fielder on the shoulder. Golds back two and one. We mentioned earlier in the pregame show, Chatwood likes to keep the ball low. A low ball pitcher gets a lot of ground balls, and Venable, this is the whole battle again, is a low ball hitter. Forsyth was leaning. Well, this is what I like about it. Right here, see that? Robbing home runs. That low wall. That's what I like about it. That's what you, you should incorporate. If you're going to move the fences in, you've got to be able to steal home runs. Line drive again. Three line drive outs in the first two innings. Talk about hitting and tough luck. Amarista, Quinton, and now Venable all lining out. Wendy's now that's better. Kadir last year. He, look at what he's done in a half of a season. Almost as many hits four less than all of last year. One less home run and only six fewer RBIs. He has had a terrific. First uh, half of the season and certainly now that is better. And so many people say why. Well maybe health is the reason. He knows how to hit. And he sure has confidence at the plate. He had a swinging bunt single his first time up and scored on Rosario's double. Highest batting averages with qualified number of at bats. Actually, Tulowitzki has a better average than Kadir. How about Miguel Cabrera? 368. Oh. Is he going to win the triple crown again? He's in a different league. To show you how, how difficult it is to accomplish the triple crown once, but twice. Rogers Hornsby and Ted Williams are the only two ever to win the Triple Crown twice. One right-handed hitter, one left-handed hitter. Oh, it's amazing. Another swinging bunt. Headley hurries it across just in time. Well, Chris Davis does have a five-home run lead on Cabrera, but plenty of time to go. Well, M Miguel Cabrera hasn't got hot yet. <laughs> That's right. I mean, every time he comes up, it looks like he's going to hit a home run or an extra base hit. It looks like he's taking batting practice. And I think that is why I say he's in a different league. He's an elite player and by far the best hitter, in my opinion, in the league. Both leagues? Or just Both American? leagues, no. yes. Rosario ripped a double to left center to knock in two runs in the first inning.
and takes ball one. Andy Ashby doing a great job on the pre and post game shows with Mike Pomerantz. He's down near the dugout, and Andy duplicating the delivery. Darren Balsey talks about that for Essen Volquez. What's that mean? You know what, Mark? It has to do with trying to be consistent every time when you get up and get forward and go to the plate. To me, it looks like he's fighting his arming a little bit. He'll spot a good fastball, and his curveball's up a little bit. But you'll see one up and then one down the dirt. He's still fighting that arm slot to get that curveball consistent in strike zone. But you know what? He's making pitches when he has to keep it right here and hopefully this offense will get going next inning. 2 and 0 to Rosario. Line to center Amarista have to play it on a hop. Rosario's got another hit. Now this is the delivery of Edison Volquez. You can see the movement. Getting off the barrel. And Andy talking about. His delivery is it about the direction with that front leg most of the time. Yeah it looks like to me he's just a little short kind of maybe striding out too far where he can't really get over his front side. And it's is actually sweeping the ball across the plate instead of staying on it and driving it through the glove. So Rosario now against Volquez is seven for 14. With seven runs batted in. Elton walked the first time. At Petco, mm hmm, 345 average. Of course, he has an average about that at every ballpark. Well, I think at Petco Park, a lot of people say, well, it's not a hitter's ballpark. There's a lot of room out there. And for Todd Helton, he's a line drive hitter with occasional power. And he hits to all fields. That is ideal. And that's the reason why you see those numbers. Todd Helton can go to all directions of the field. Maybe not now as well as he did before. He's had back problems. The bat, the bat speed's not there. So they play him as a left field hitter. And that's probably where they're going to pitch him down and away. Left center field. And Marista outruns him. Oh, he gets a tremendous break at the crack of the bat. Amarista was out of the blocks and chases down a potential double. Well, that's an outstanding call because you see the location elevated just a little bit. Good piece of hitting by Todd Helton. But the first step by Alexi Amarista, take a look at this. He's on the move direct to the baseball. He continues to amaze me, and it's not about. His comfortable position. He's played a lot in center field, but he's a middle infielder at heart. Outstanding first step by the outfielder. Rosario holding at first, two away to Arenado, rounded into a double play the first time. Yeah, that would have been another run for the Rockies if Amarista doesn't get to that line drive. Let's take a look at the block by Rene Rivera. And this gives confidence to Edison Volquez. He can snap that breaking ball off. And his catcher is going to have his back, especially with a guy on first. Nice job. There's the breaking ball snapping into the zone. Two strikes on Arenado. Bite one and two the count. Well, you got to go back out there. Good breaking ball. Had an awkward swing at it, especially with the young players. They get very nervous when there's a two strike approach. He's got plenty of pitches to work with. Let's take a look at the signs. Wouldn't be surprised if that was a breaking ball away again. Shot to third, and Headley gets the force at second. And the Padres will come up bottom of the third. Rivera, his first at bat since being called up from Tucson.
Bringing Rene Rivera stepping up to the plate for the first time this season with the Padres, and that's the one thing he said he was most anxious to see if it would translate. Hitting extremely well in Tucson and wants to see what he can do here, guys, but also feels really familiar with this group. Of course, spent time with them in spring training and said that that would be the best thing for him in terms of working with Edinson Volquez. He's done that before, would just try to get on the same page with all the pitchers, see what they've been working on, continue to build on that. But right now, this appearance at the plate what he's most anxious to see what happens well I agree with you Kelly 343 down in Tucson 251 at bats a lot of emotions are going through his head right now and it's all about getting to the big leagues and I commend him for putting all the effort into AAA through different organizations ground ball to the left side to Herrera he throws him out And that'll bring up the pitcher, Edinson Volquez. Carlos Gonzalez, he has the middle finger of his right hand is bruised and uh, enough to keep there. You see, he has that bandaged. Tough to swing the bat. They don't want to aggravate that, make it more serious. But he's just a game or two away from back in the lineup, and of course, we'll. Be a starting outfielder for the National League in the All Star game. I'm talking to Walt Weiss about cargo. He came out of his at bat last last night. And that is something that is very strange to him because he is a guy that you have a tough time taking him out of the lineup because of injury. And that says a lot if you're coming out during your at bat. And Volquez looks at three pitches and Chatwood has his second strikeout. Two outs to the leadoff man, Everett Cabrera. And time for the Saquon Casino vacation stat of the game. Major League leaders' fewest strikeouts by pitchers in July. That's team strikeouts. And the Rockies with only 31 strikeouts in uh, their games played this month of eight games. Minnesota and Oakland surprising to see Oakland on that list. Cabrera grounded to short is only at bat. First pitch strike again. Everest one for 15 cents coming off the injured list. Well, it's all about timing for Everett Cabrera. Do you think it's easy? No, it's not. Two rehab games. That's not enough at bats, but they needed his presence in the lineup. And sometimes you have to sacrifice some at bats to get back into rhythm. Another strike. One and two. Ever thought it was high. That ball was probably elevated, but you go back to that first pitch fastball. They're going to get a lot of them tonight, and they have to take that away. You can see those by Southland Technology, our Fox tracks. Those balls are in the zone. One elevated to change the eye level. One down and away right there, number four. <laughs> Mama's ready. Charge those line drives now. Got to protect the old man. He's kind of having himself a nice little. Dream thought right now. <laughs> Saying, I'm a, I want the Padres going a bunch of runs later on here. Two balls, two strikes, Cabrera. Tyler Chatwood is not allowed a hit. Checks a swing and the count full. Well, you can see Everett Cabrera with a two strike count, 3 2 here. He wants to put solid at bat, so I love the fact that he's choking up on the yeah. bat to get better bat control. That's what you have to do as a leadoff hitter. Didn't do that last year, and that's why he has become a better hitter. Just try to punch one for a base hit somewhere. Charged by Herrera. And Tyler Chatwood has allowed only a walk to the Padres in the first three innings as the Rockies lead it 2 0.
Three Rockies, two, five, and oh. They've left four. The Padres, no runs, no hits, no errors, and have left one. Bottom three of the order for Colorado, Colvin, Herrera, and Chadwood as Ryan Plesko up in the owner's suite. Uh, good to see Rhino. What a force in the lineup. Big, huge, strong hack. He wanted to go for the downs a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he would spin himself in that batter's box, uh, taking a big rip, wouldn't he? Colvin took a third strike the first time. That's the only strikeout for Volquez. Now I'd like to go down to Andy next to the dugout. Andy pitching inside and, and the mentality of he did against Tyler Chatwood last time with that fastball in. The mentality of doing that. You know what, Mark? When you, you throw inside and you have to be effective inside, not only throw inside for effect, but also be able to double up in there on the black and prove to them that you're not only trying to back them off the plate, but you know what? I can back it up and throw a strike in there also. And also, what else it does is clears it. Colvin flying out foul territory. Quinton making the play one away. When you're throwing inside and that's in the back of the hitter's mind. It clears the outside part of the plate for a right hander to throw that curveball down the way and stay with that change up down the way. But you have to show them that you're going to be able to spot your fastball not only in but both sides of the plate at any count. But you've got to stay aggressive. It makes your off speed that much more effective. So if you do miss a little bit. They're not covering that outside part of the plate. So Andy, you know, there's two different issues here now: right-hander against a right-handed hitter, or right-hander against a left-handed hitter pitching inside to that left-handed hitter. A little more difficult and challenging, isn't it? Yes, Dick, you're right. You know, you've got to make sure that you stay behind that baseball. Don't guide it in there because, that, as a sinker baller, if I would guide it, I would get that real flat sinker. You want to drive the ball into that strike zone on a left-handed hitter. Stay behind it. Make sure you get it in there. He got that one in there and a high fly ball into shallow left center. Quinton wants this one as well. Two away. When we talk about driving the ball inside. Take a look at that movement. And that's the reason why off the end of the bat, you're going to cheat a little bit if you're the hitter. And that cheating situation will hit, get balls off the barrel of the bat. Andy Ashby was outstanding at that. Pitching both sides of the plate with movement. Chatwood with the base hit the first time up on a hit and run. High school senior, 571 hitting. And he's a 325 career hitter in his limited time coming into this season, and he's added eight for 22. So he's another threat in the lineup. One and one. Well, that can win you ball games. You gotta help yourself if you're a pitcher in the National League. Fastball hits the outside corner. One and two the count. Got him. Breaking ball in the dirt. Easy inning for Edinson Volquez as he retires the side in order for the first time. Padres bring up Amarista, Headley, and Quentin.
you by your San Diego County Lexus dealer, who invites you to test drive a luxurious Lexus automobile today. By Petco, where the healthy pets go. By Farmers Insurance, contact your local agent, 888-96-FARMERS. And by GMC, we are professional grade. With Kelly Crow, Andy Ashby down below. Mark Swinney, Dick Enberg, we're pleased you're with us. Mark ran a couple of days off. Watch out, Alpine, he's on the loose. <laughs> oh, he's having coffee in the morning with his yeah, boys. Yeah, love Gotta him. love that. Taking him to school, playing mom, and giving Mary a break. First pitch to Amarista. In for a strike. Amarista lined out. Padres, while they don't have a hit, have hit three balls on the line to infielders. Amarista lined to second. Quentin is lined to third. Venable lined to short. Got to find some holes here. High fly ball. Just missed that one. Center fielder Colvin now comes in for it. One away to Chase Headley. Headley on the road trip batting fourth a few games with Quinton moving into the third slot. Now they're back into the same order that they started the season. Headley in the third spot and Quinton clean up. Struck out his first time. Well, you can see taking a lot of fastballs his last at bat. Starts him off with a good breaking ball. Fly ball to left. Dickerson. Two away. Oh, Chatwood making it look easy. Well, Andy, talking about Tyler Chatwood working very quickly, and you like to do that as well. Yeah, that's important, I think, as a pitcher. Not only rhythm for yourself working quickly get up there you know throw the ball get up there throw the ball but great for your defense keeps them on their toes you keep the game going they're not just back there get on their heels and then when the balls hit to them they get you know off guard but definitely looks like Volquez is starting to get in that you know that nice rhythm it's important Carlos Quinton lined out to third his first time oh, good to see Carlos getting into that rhythm Gone with the newer stance for a while now. Feels very comfortable just getting off those legs. But his bat speed is back. That's a strike. Carlos has had good success this year against Rocky pitching, hitting 346, four doubles and a home run. Outside. Looks as if that's about the speed that Chatwood wants to work. 93 yeah, on the fastball. He does. He sits around 93. He can add a little bit with two strikes, try to elevate. But he's very proud of his fastball. Back through the middle, and that's the first Padre hit. A two out single for Carlos Quinton. You can see the fastball with movement, but right over the middle of the plate. See Carlos Quinn getting that foot down early. I like that. Straight through the middle of the diamond. Put him in the stretch. So he's hit the ball hard twice, lined out the first time. That one right through the wickets of pitcher Chadwood brings up Jesus Guzman. A ground ball, love by Arenado. Anything close to him. He is lethal. What a defender this young man is. On to the fifth. Two nothing Colorado.
Yeah, well, Lane Rosario, a two run double in the first inning after Dickerson had walked. Kadire with a swinging bun single, and Rosario a shot to left center, and that's the story. Two nothing. Yeah, that young guy's working on a swing. <laughs> top of the fifth inning, and top of the order. Dickerson, LeMahieu, and Kadire for the Rockies. So Mark Sweeney uh, in Washington, D.C., the Padres had a clubhouse meeting. It happens in the course of a baseball season, however many times. We're not privileged as reporters to know what goes on. Even the manager and coaches are excused from those meetings. You've been there, done that. What happens? Yeah, and you know what? It happens to every single team every year when you go through phases like this, losing nine games in a row. I think Andy Ashby can elaborate on this too. But when you go in there, it's all about hashing what's going on and what you can fix individually and also collectively. But I think what you lean on now is Bud Black, his coaching staff. But I think you need to hear it from your leaders as well. I think Chase Headley is a voice. Obviously, Mark Kotze. Houston Street, the guys that have to step up, Carlos Quentin, you have to step up and you have to be a voice because you've got to get out of that. And when you limit those long losing streaks, you're going to be a better club for it. 2 1 to Dickerson. Line foul. Well, the average fan would think that a clubhouse meeting, you'd have, you know, guys stomping up and down and shouting, we got to do this and let's go and fire them up, but it isn't that at all. It's a great point. And the reason for that is that you have 162 games, and it's not about rah rah, it's about getting things done individually. And it's more mental than physical, but physically you can do things as well, right, Andy? Yeah, you got to just iron it out, like you said. The main thing is get in the clubhouse. If you have a problem, if there's something bothering you, you have to get it ironed out. So when you step on this field, you're all together. And it, it, it's everything starts in the clubhouse. You got to make sure when you step on this field, you guys are playing as a team, and that's very important. When you go through a skid, you know, you see some guys get frustrated, and it is frustrating, but you got to stick together, hash it out, and know when you come out here, you're a team and you give it your all. This team is not dying. They're, you know, they're running balls out, and that's important. Keep playing hard, good things are going to happen. And I think what Andy talks about, too, and why I say it happens to every ball club 1998, two days left in the season. Line drive, base hit for Dickerson, who has only five hits and 29 at bats prior to that swing. Two days left in the season, we had to have a team meeting. And, and Bruce Bochy had everyone together and went around the whole room. And what you need to do is you need to rehash some of the things that you're involved with. In 1998, very successful run, but we had a team meeting. And then we go into the playoffs because we win that last game. Greg Vaughn hits his 50th home run, and we're off flying, and we go to the World Series. We end up losing to the Yankees in four games, but that meeting was essential to get back on track. LeMahieu has flied out twice. Could be two. Foresight. Cabrera back to first, a double play. Room service, double play chance as LeMahieu. Sharply hit right at the second baseman. Well, I marvel on the comfort level of Logan Forsyth and Everett Cabrera. Looks like they've been playing for years together. Good feed. He knows exactly where Everett Cabrera wants it. He kicks the bag, gets out, and delivers a strong throw to first base. Big double play for Edison Volquez. Brings up Kadire. Infield hit and a ground out to third. Pursuant to the conversation about a clubhouse meeting. Whoa. Shot back up the middle. Well, the second hit of the inning, but the double play keeping men off base for Kadire, who's now two for three. Don Drysdale told a story. He comes up from Mo Montreal to join the Brooklyn Dodgers. As you see this shot again, right past the ears of uh, Volquez, 19 years old, and that veteran Bo Brooklyn Dodger team. And he said his first clubhouse meeting. One of the veterans, I can't remember, if it was Pee Wee or Campanella. Someone mm -hmm. said, pointed him out and said, "Hey, kid." You don't play hard and play well here. You're taking money out of our pockets. So yes. You better. Play and I well. agree with that. <laughs> I agree with that theory. Whether you're old school or new school, you're taking money out of the pockets. Rosario, and there goes the runner, Kadire, who's leaning the right way. And as soon as that ball got away from Rivera, he moves up to second base. But to the point, Dick, it really, and let's take a look at this block. Ball in the dirt. 
Skips off. Rene Rivera tries to keep it in front. Wild pitch. He's done a nice job back there blocking balls tonight. It's not an easy task with Edison Volquez and the reason for location. Now big set double play now with a couple of hits and a wild pitch. Rosario two for two with a two run double and uh, meeting at the mound Rivera going out to talk to his pitcher. Well, we've talked about the success with Rosario against the Padres base open. I almost take it for a mentality of a pitcher and Andy Ashby you can speak to this almost a two strike approach with a base open. Yeah you know what you don't want to get it beat here you know make your make him hit your pitch stay aggressive but make him hit your pitch. And uh, you know work off that fastball away. Certainly don't want to throw the fastball in he just seems to hammer that consistently he's now against Volquez alone he's hitting 500. And. Off speed good location with that change up. Now seven for 14 Rosario against the man he faces here. Two home runs and seven runs batted in. Pitchers for hitters and hitters for pitchers. This seems to be tilting in the favor of the young catcher. Had him backing out of there on the curveball. Now, Dick, so many times as a hitter, you have comfort levels with different teams, different staffs. You throw your hands up and say why but there's certain teams you feel very comfortable against. It's a reason why they can put Rosario in the four hole. He likes hitting off the Padres. Kadir at second base with two outs. Goddamn swinging. So he went to the breaking ball and strikes out Rosario. The double play playing big in the fifth inning. Forsyth and Cabrera and on to Guzman. The visitors and it's the Padres coming up here bottom of the fifth Logan Forsyth to lead off. Well, let's take a look at our AT&T Twitter poll who will win the NL final vote. You can vote on Twitter by using the following hashtags hashtag ASG Desmond hashtag ASG Freeman hashtag ASG Gonzalez ASG Pence and hashtag ASG Puig. And I think Yasiel Puig will check the updated results later in the game. You can also vote your official selection on MLB.com through 4 p.m. Eastern on Thursday. And remember, the All Star game is July 16th only on Fox. Logan Forsyth 
Starts things here in the fifth inning. The Padres need two to tie. He walked the first time up. And he lines that one to left field. Another line drive out. Oh my. Padres hitting in tough luck. And Tyler Chatwood throwing the balls that find uh, the bat on the solid part. But uh, the swing is carrying it right to a glove. After the last inning, Volquez and Rivera, of course, they're renewing their acquaintance. Uh, Volquez from the Dominican Republic and uh, his catcher from Puerto Rico. Now that communication is essential. Pitcher and catcher, they need to be on the same page. And Rene Rivera understands what's important is executing the scouting report. Will Venable, one of the four Padres to hit the ball sharply on the line, but right to a fielder. Now Andy Ashby down next to the dugout. Carlos Hernandez, your catcher, talking with him in between innings. That was important, wasn't it? Yeah, that's very important. Especially, you know, that has a lot to do with your rhythm and your pace. You know, if you're constantly shaking off your catcher, he's coming out. I mean, that slows the game down. The fans don't want to see that. They want the game moving. But Carlos Hernandez was definitely awesome about communicating, talking before the game, and you knew, you know, what you, how you wanted to handle these hitters before the game started, and we kept it going. That one slapped into the second tier off to the left. The count remains one and two to Venable. Rene Rivera is on deck. That one not hit on the line, but will fall into the short right field area for a base hit. So there you go. You hit a shot. The first time up goes right to the shortstop and uh, sounded like he might have even have broken his bat and just able to shovel that one into right for a base knock. Well, look at the swing by Will Venable and you see him breaking his bat, but getting his foot down early and pulling his hands in. Yes, it dies a hero. That bat, but an outstanding swing by Will Venable. Sometimes you don't put the barrel of the bat on the baseball, but we've seen a lot of line outs tonight. That's a change of luck. Good swing by Will Venable. May you almost uh, robbing him of another hit. Here's Rene Rivera. Wouldn't this be a nice time for the new catcher to get a big base hit? Takes a fastball for a strike. Rivera, second round pick by the Mariners 12 seasons ago, made his major league debut with Seattle. A couple years ago, played with Minnesota as well. Just uh, 98 career major league games in his career. Now 99. And that's fouled away. What uh, was the question around the clubhouse? How can a man whose lifetime average is around 240 suddenly be hitting 340 at Tucson? And the answer was he's using the entire field. And that is something that he had to make a change with. And that's a good change. And his perseverance really amazes me. Being down in the minor leagues, going through all of those rigors, and that's very difficult when every name is called it's not yours and now it's called at the excitement and what you put in for work to get to this point I commend him for that because it's all about the prize getting to the big leagues and putting that beautiful uniform on mm -hmm. two strikes the count Venable with his lead and fouled away so with the injury to Grandal and surgery will be required and uh, by all estimation, you know, it, Yasmani you know, will have to really rehab hard to be a factor even in spring training next year. Hundley now is the main catcher. Eddie Rodriguez, who came up with the Padres middle of last year, was at San Antonio. He'll move to Tucson and take Rivera's place there. Yeah, it's all about Nick Hundley and getting back into those everyday at bats. Struck him out. Fastball at 94. Third strikeout, Chatwood. Yeah, in case you didn't see it, this is what happened. Bases loaded, the play at the plate, the slide by Rendon, and not expecting it was Grandal. He's leaning out to get the throw, and the slide catches him on the ankle and turns that knee sharply, and that thrust uh, creating the injury. You knew it was bad the way Grandal's a tough guy. He was in agony. Well, not catching in the big leagues, but. Ground ball up the middle, a nice stop by Herrera, and throws out Volquez. Wow. Another ball well hit for an out. 
How many of those are going to happen tonight? Five shots for outs by the Padre hitters. They still trail 2 nothing. on Fox Sports San Diego is brought to you by Sequan, real friendly, real close. And by the Aramco Group, purchase, refinance, reverse. Five quick innings in the book and the Padres trailing the Rockies 2-0. Each team ravenously hungry for a win. Well, that play at the home plate, some fans might wonder whether or not that was out of order for Rendon to slide in that hard. Yeah, and I thought it was a it was a clean play, and it's all about timing because as a catcher, you're blind to this play, but you become a first baseman, and he's in a position, a very vulnerable position, as you can see in the slide. It's a hard, aggressive slide, but there was no intent to hurt Yasmani no. Grandal. It was just a bad timing play, and it's unfortunate he is hurt because Yasmani was doing an outstanding job behind the plate. Yes, the offense wasn't there too many times consistently, but you talked to Bud Black. It was a it was a clean play. It was just timing. Aggressive play by Jesus Guzman, but there was no intent to injure. And everyone always talks about the Buster Posey play right. a couple years ago, and it's not about that. It's just unfortunate Yasmani Grandal was in a bad position on that slide. Todd Hilton leads off the inning. The veteran first baseman has walked and lined the left center field. A good running catch made by Amarista. I think a lot of catchers would talk about, you know, there's not anything he could have done mechanically differently to be in a better position. It was just unfortunate. You have a fast runner, Rendon, so he got to the plate quickly. The ball wasn't hit sharply, so Guzman had to hurry his throw. He was off balance. And it's like a it's like an auto accident. You can make a lot of mistakes, go through a red light, nothing happens. It has to be an intersection with somebody else. Exactly. Doing uh, something that's going to create that collision, and that, that was a perfect example baseball wise. One ball, one strike. Fastball did not go, and it's two and one. Well, if anyone knows Yasmani Grandal, he's going to come back. Stronger. They're going to work hard at the rehab. It's unfortunate this year is going by the wayside, but I think he is going to make it very important for him to get back and hopefully he gets back for spring training. They say 9 to 12 months, so back up from July, June, May, April, maybe the start of next year if he gets back at the minimum time, or if not, it could be mid uh, midseason next year. But a young man, 24, so the healing process uh, should be good. He's in great shape. Three and one now to Helton. Foul tip. Outstanding movement on that fastball. That arm side run. 
And you can see Todd Helton in a hitter's count swinging through baseballs. I talked about the bat speed for Todd Helton. It's not there, but he knows how to manipulate the barrel of the bat. He's going to probably be looking out over the plate for that fastball right now. I'd be surprised if Edison gives him that again. And he earns a leadoff walk. Leadoff walk in the first inning. Spelled trouble as the Rockies got two runs. Hey, Padre fans, the countdown to opening day at Del Mar is underway. Tune in as Fox Sports San Diego broadcasts live from the paddock. Don't miss the hats and the horses at Del Mar's biggest race day of the season, Wednesday, July 17th at 1230, right here on Fox Sports San Diego. Do we dare send uh, Mike Pomerantz out there to beautiful Del Mar? Huh? With it is awesome. Those thoroughbreds, equine and human. And never, they, they're, they're in force. Never been to an opening day. You have to experience it. <laughs> what a beautiful place. Yeah, it's a fabulous place. You know, you know, it's one of my favorite things to do to get away because I get myself buried into that racing form. You know, it's like geometry, you know. They give you the winners. You just got to find them. <laughs> They're all right in that racing form. You just got to find them. I actually heard that you close your eyes at the point. <laughs> no, That's the no, best I way to do it. No, I, I study. know you study. Yes, you do. <laughs> One strike the count. Renato grounded into a double play and sent a hard ground ball to third baseman Headley, his second at bat. He's uh, down on the count, two strikes. The Padres would like to get another double play chance. They've turned two tonight. Grounded into more double plays than any Rocky Renato. This could be another. Takes Cabrera to the bag, then the quick throw is not in time. Had the ball been one step closer to the bag, then Cabrera could have turned the 6 3, but not quite. Well, you see this ball go right over the bag. That's the difficult part. You don't know who defensively is going to field that ground ball, but credit Everett Cabrera's athletic ability. To get that out, put enough on the throw to have a chance. I didn't think he had a shot at first base. A very athletic play by Everett Cabrera. And that's what they missed in his uh, 17 games on the injured list. Not only the bat hitting over 300, but the way he fields his position, covering so much ground on the left side of the infield. Tyler Colvin has struck out and fly to left. Top of the sixth inning here at Petco Park. All the scoring in the first inning. A walk to Dickerson. One out swinging bunt by Kadire and Wolene Rosario. The catcher lined a double to left center to knock in two. That's been it. Two and oh. Well, that's what Volquez has to fight overthrowing pitches. His location has been so much better these last couple innings. Got to locate that pitch as these hitters counts. If he continues to do that, Bud Black's going to probably have to make a decision on using his bullpen a little earlier than he'd like. 86 pitches here with one out in the sixth. Uh oh, 3 and 0. Oh. And 2 0 oh changeup. So he walks the leadoff man, Hilton, gets the fielder's choice out from Arenado. Now working himself into a jam 3 and 0 oh to Colvin. Walt Weiss will green light his hitters 3 and 0. Oh. Chat with a couple batters away. On deck is Jonathan Herrera. And he does green light him 3 and 0 oh off the head of the bat. A little looper down the left field line. Running hard and making it to third. Arenado halfway to second and retreating now is Colvin. First and third didn't hit it hard. But. Dumps it into left field for a base knock. Well this is an excuse me 3 0 hack. I think Tyra Colvin got lucky on this pitch. He's looking to right dumps it to left. But credit Carlos Quinton keeping the double play in order throwing to second base. He throws that ball in the third. 
Tyler Colvin walks into second base, but now the double plays in order. Gives an opportunity for Edson Volquez to throw a ground ball. And Colvin was almost a halfway to second base. And Quinton indeed, had he gone to third, Colvin would be standing at second. Here's Herrera. He'll be tough to double up. Good speed. A single and a fly out to left. High ball one as the next pitch will be the 90th from Volquez. Looking ahead to Chatwood in the sixth inning, uh, he has not pitched beyond six innings all season long, but he's been very efficient tonight, allowing only two base runners, a walk and a single, uh, three base runners, excuse me, two singles and a walk. Well, he's been aggressive tonight. Edison Volquez. Needs to be aggressive in this situation. Get a hard ground ball up the middle. Hopefully they can turn two. Brad Rock just recalled from Tucson. Starts to throw in the bullpen. Herrera likes to bunt. Yep. Safety squeeze. The throw to the plate. Not good. As he tried to glove the throw, Volquez and scoring the third run of the game he is Nolan Arenado. So they placed the safety squeeze. It works because Volquez couldn't get that ball to flip directly to the catcher. It hung in his glove. Well, to stay out of the double play, Edison Volquez has more time than he gave himself. And the exchange, as you can see, lifts his eyes up just a little too quickly. But to stay out of the double play, Herrera lays down a safety squeeze. They score at E1 and a sacrifice for Herrera. So first and second, a run home. Boy, this is a not a very pretty inning for the Padres. Leadoff walk, fielder's choice, bloop single. Sacrifice uh, on the safety squeeze, error. Three nothing and two men on with one out and Chatwood squaring the bunt and takes it for a ball outside. Now this is a situation where we've already seen a slash by Tyler Chatwood. His first priority is to lay down a sacrifice bunt, but when you're ahead 3-0 and the way he is pitching tonight, I wouldn't be surprised if they put him in motion, move those infielders around. That's a big run to make it three nothing. Ball two. You no, know, this is one of those innings. Volquez has been his own worst enemy. Leadoff walk has come around to score two of the three runs in this game, even though it's fielder's choice that scores. But the the reason uh, this inning began in the Awkward manner was the leadoff walk. And he's only walked three men, two have scored. Or the man who replaced on the fielder's choice scores, but technically it's the walk that became the run. And now 2 0 to Chatwood who can swing the bat. Ooh. Didn't get a chance there. That's way out of the strike zone. So Volquez. The fact that he didn't get the out at the plate, you know, that may still be worrying on him here. And it's a concentration level. At the big league level, you have to maintain your concentration. Edison Volquez is not there mentally. And you can see he's very frustrated and he's showing it on the mound. And he's a pitch away from loading the bases. Chet was trying to give himself up and can't. Four pitch walk and the bases are loaded. So two walks in the inning, and that's bringing out the Bluebirds, and also bringing the manager to the mound with the bases loaded. So that's going to be all for Edinson Volquez. Brad Brock just up from Tucson will enter the game. Oh, those bases on balls, says Bud Black. It's three nothing Rockies. They have the bases loaded with one out. Too generous, said Edinson Volquez tonight.
Padres 3-0. And baseball fans, this July, baseball's greatest stars gather for the biggest event of the summer. The Midsummer Classic returns to New York with home field advantage for the World Series on the line. It's 2013 Major League Baseball All-Star Game live from New York, July 16th, only on Fox. And you'll be able to see Everett Cabrera, the Padres, in action in that game. Cabrera, only the third Nicaraguan to be so honored going to the All-Star Game. Dennis Martinez several times and Vicente Padilla the other. All right, Brad Brock just up from Tucson today. He's been ping-ponging his way between Tucson and San Diego this season. This is his third stint with the big club. Bases loaded, one out. Leadoff man Dickerson. Strike one. Dickerson walked to open the game, came around to score. He has popped up and singled. Those four walks crucial to the score tonight. Yeah, for Edison, I don't think he just, he didn't get in the rhythm tonight. You know, it's frustrating, but also that concentration level. You got to have that, especially on the mound. And there's a long drive to left field deep into the corner as Quinton makes the catch. That'll score the fourth run, and all the runners tag and advance 90. Colvin. And scored on the. Uh, Suicide squeeze. Make that Arenado now Colvin on the sacrifice fly to make it four nothing. Herrera moves over to third. And Chadwood on base for the second time tonight. Advanced to second. So as a base runner pitcher and hitter, Chadwood showing you the full force of his talent. Yeah, very interesting with one out. All the base runners tagging on that play looked like it might have been over Carlos Quinton's head. LeMahieu, 0 for 3, two flyouts and a double play ball. And this is a crucial hitter for Brock to get out. I mean, two runs are in now, it's 4-0. He'll afford another two run single and. Well, that's Brad Brock's job right here. Limit the damage. He was three and one at Tucson with a three two two ERA all in relief. Twenty seven strikeouts in twenty two plus innings. Don't want to face that man with the bases loaded. Two for three tonight to Dyer. That'll be out of play. Well, we always talk about how you can pitch with a base open. This isn't the situation you want to attack. This is the guy you want to get out with Michael Kadire, the Colorado Rockies All Star. On deck. What an inning. A blue pit. And that's all. That's been contributed by the offense, but a couple of walks and an error. And you put that in the mixer and it comes out two runs. And two men in scoring position. Colvin's little fly ball single down the left field line, the only base hit. Oh, Try three. That's pitching the fastball inside. Brock gets the final two outs. Two runs, one hit, one error, two left. Middle of the six, four nothing, Colorado.
we go to the bottom of the sixth inning and Tyler Chatwood has been mighty tough. Looking well, at our Twitter poll uh, looks like Puig might be the man. Huh? Yeah it's all about the last vote for the final spot in the NL all star game and that doesn't surprise me. Yasiel Puig is a guy that has caught baseball by storm not only the NL. And I said a couple weeks ago I, I wouldn't be surprised if he did make this vote and I'm glad he has to be voted in if he does so. But look at Freddie Freeman. What an outstanding year he's had for the Atlanta Braves. And to ignore Adrian Gonzalez that takes some swallowing as well. Cabrera Amarista Headley. And that's a strike. Rounded twice to short. Everett Cabrera tonight. The only base runner is off Chadwood a walk to Forsyth with two outs in the second. Quinton single with two outs in the fourth and one out single blue pit by Venable in the fifth. That's been it. And with only 58 pitches thrown. Chadwood even though he's never gone beyond six it looks as if the way he's. Uh, maintaining his. Command. Well, now we can pitch off the fastball. You saw the changeup right there on the second pitch. Foul ball, late swing by Cabrera. Backing it up with another fastball. He's been very aggressive. Be interesting to see how the Padres' style and their approaches and plans at the plate if they change tonight because it's a lot of fastballs. And you can't take fastballs if you watch the game to this point. And a curveball there, knocked down by Chatwood. Good hustle and throws in time. And let's hope that he's not injured. He comes up limping. So he blocked that one with his body to save a base hit. Let's see where it hit him. It's obviously in the leg somewhere. Oh, he's really acting as though he's out here right on the foreleg down above the ankle. A oh, good swing by Everett Cabrera, and that rattles off that push off leg. Well, for the Padres, they've run into some bad luck tonight when they've squared some balls up, and this is an indication of exactly that. That's a sixth ball that's hit like a rocket all for outs. They attend to that lower right leg. It looks very uncomfortable walking on it. And that's what he's pushing off with. Well, you can see why the Rockies are excited about the talent of this 23 year old Chetwood. He has terrific stuff. Probably going to try to throw a couple of pitches, see how he feels. But he's still limping. Tells his catcher Rosario that he wants to try a couple of pitches. Wrong with that delivery. One more. Walt Rice, the manager, and others, uh, concerned observers. Well, we have a break. Let's uh, check out our subway in game box score. A lot of zeros are going to appear here, folks. With Quentin and Venable, the only base hits. Well, hard to get anything going. It's been an aggressive style by Tyler Chatwood. It's been a hard hit ball in just about every inning, but they've all gone for outs. Well, there's plenty of outs left in this game to get back in it. Credit Brad Brock for limiting that damage last inning. But offensively for the Padres, they've had a lot of fight in them. 
And hopefully they can start that right now with Alexi Amarista. He's one of those victimized by the Adam ball. He lined sharply to the second baseman his first time up. Cabrera denied a hit on that sharp comebacker that uh, Chatwood used a goalie stop. I don't think he's thrown a pitch that slowly on off speed breaking pitch all night. Fastball at 92, so he's got the volume and on his fastball velocity. There's a change up. He's thrown all his pitches. Fastball, curveball, and changeup, but it's going to be interesting to see if that tightens up at all and see if he drives with that back leg. Whoa. It's the call there, two and two. That was a late call by Phil Cousin. Almost looked like he didn't want to call it at first. Look at how long he takes here. Takes a look at it. Oh, that ball normally would be called too high, as you saw how far Rosario dragged it down. Doesn't get the call there. Full count. Yeah, you can see you can make it cause for number four. Well, same location, just a little bit in the pitch before. This would be the most pitches to any hitter tonight. Seven coming up. Well, oh, there's some umpires that'll take their time in calling strikes. But watching Phil Cuzzy tonight, the home plate umpire, he's been in a rhythm when he calls a strike and very demonstrative when he calls strikes. Easy two hopper to LeMayhew and two gone now in the Padre sixth inning. That'll bring up Chase Headley. Again, folks, if you're just joining us, the three stars in the lineup for Colorado, not active tonight as Headley takes a strike to Lewitsky, Carlos Gonzalez Dexter Fowler they combined 50 home runs 140 runs batted in various injuries but they have done a great job supporting Tyler Chadwood with help from Edinson Volquez's wildness Dickerson with only five hits all year has a walk a single scored a run knocked in a run with a sacrifice fly. Big blow a two run double Rosario that ball by the first baseman Helton into the right field corner and Henley on his way. Stand up double. First extra base hit of the night. And only the third hit off Chatwood, so it gives the fans here a chance to cheer. Uh, what lefty doesn't like it down and in, and Chase Hadley, good balance on that swing and the approach, hitting it by Todd Helton. Well struck by Chase Hadley. I got to capitalize with two outs. First runner in scoring position tonight for San Diego, Carlos Quinton. He has hit it hard twice, lined to third, singled sharply up the middle. These Padres have a lot of fight in them. First ball swinging. Interestingly, they keep statistics on everything <laughs> these days, and he's fourth in the National League at swinging at first pitches. Look at that. Carlos Gomez in Milwaukee over half the time swings at the first pitch. Well you know Pablo Sandoval is going to swing. He's swinging on the on deck circle. <laughs> That's right. One and one. Ninety five on that fastball. So the ankles OK. Yeah, he's reaching back. We're getting back to Carlos Quentin. There's certain style of hitters that really love the first pitch. That's that American League style of getting in there and taking a hack at that first good one. Check swing. <laughs> Carlos says check with the first base umpire. The only player in the league who, who he says check on whether I went around or not. Did I go? Ooh, that was pretty close. You gotta love it. Trying to defuse uh, the call by, by saying, oh, I was okay. Sure, ask the first base umpire. It's very polite. <laughs> Two and one. 
God. Padres need a big blow here. Trailing 4 0 in the sixth. And low 3 and 1. No. Calls that one a strike. 2 and 2. Waited before calling that one. So suddenly, Cuzzy more deliberate. Puckers up the manager there in the first base dugout. But you can make a case for that being a tight but proper call. See how tough it is. The two strikes are right on the paint. Inside outside for Chatwood. Now trying to stay out of the middle of the plate. Every pitcher talks about that. In the dirt blocked by Rosario. And the full count. Quinton with Jesus Guzman on deck. Fans clamoring for some run action. Ball to short, deep at short. Herrera has got a good gun and throws out Quentin easily. So the Padres get a two-out double from Headley, unable to bring him in. It remains four nothing. Andy Ashby, Mike Pomeranz with you, working on the post-game show. I know that Edinson had been battling his command much of the evening, but the job Brad Brock did, keeping the floodgates from becoming wide open, really well done. Yeah, he came in a big situation here with bases loaded, only one out, and got two big outs and kept the Rockies from actually, you know, getting actually blowing this game open. Yeah, it was a big, big half inning for Brad Brock. Got himself a couple of key outs when we see in the postgame show. We're going to talk more about that. You'll hear from the manager, Buddy Black, and we will speak with Eric Stoltz, tomorrow's starter, live on the postgame show. We'll see you after the final out, gentlemen. All right, Mike and Andy will be with you. The Emmy Award winning Padres postgame show here on Fox Sports San Diego. Michael Kadire, infield hit and a line single to right, a center field rather, two for three. Foul sad into the glove. 0 oh, 1 2, Brock from Monmouth University, New Jersey. Long shot to make it. 42nd round pick. On the outside corner, three pitches, and Kadire is out of there. Second strikeout in a row for Brock. Both called. Oh, what an impressive pitch by Brad Brock. Dotting that on the outside. He has worked well with Ray Rene Rivera in triple A but good to see this tandem up in the big leagues right now. That's right. He's been pitching to Rivera down in Tucson. Yeah, Tucson Padres in first place in the Pacific Coast League. 
And Rosario did not get the call. He wanted timeout. Stepped out uh, before plate umpire Cozy was uh, willing to give him the timeout because Brock was ready to pitch. Oh, Phil Cozy does not have to give him, and he almost gave him the timeout right there. Credit Brad, Brad Brock for delivering the pitch and throwing a strike. That's very difficult. I've never been a pitcher at this level, but using your concentration and throwing a strike, getting 0-2 quickly against Rosario. He has a single and a two-run double tonight. Uh, Volquez. Volquez struck him out in the fifth inning. Two and two. Very quick rhythm for Brad Brock. Struck him out. Three straight strikeouts. Well, Brock in high school was a terrific basketball player, a three point shooter. Well, he just got a three pointer there, a three straight strikeout. Check out the tilt on this slider. Down. The hitters will indicate the type of stuff that you have, and that slider right there indicates the break on that pitch. Very impressive. Todd Helton takes ball one. So he came in relief of Volquez, got the sacrifice fly, then struck out LeMahieu. Then in this inning, Kadir and Rosario. 2 0. Oh. Helton has walked lined to left center and walked again. There's a strike, 2 and 1. Sense the rhythm that Rene Rivera and Brad Brock have developed at AAA. They're on the same page. And to work quickly, you have to be on that same page. Not shaking off. Fastball away. Four runs for the Rockies. Two on the two-run double in the first inning. The two runs scored in the sixth inning on. A safety squeeze and a sacrifice fly. There's the Rockies got two runs and only one hit. Pass ball in. 93, a lot of run on that one. He saw Rivera shake his head as if he wanted Brock to shake off and maybe try to. Confuse the hitter Helton. I don't think that's going to work on the veteran Helton. It's all about trusting your catcher. Change up right down the middle. And a soft ground ball. Nice play by Brock for the put off. One, two, three. Brad Brock retires the Rockies in order. We're at the stretch half of the seventh at Petco.
plate. And he explained to me one of the things that he has adjusted at the plate, saying that exaggerated leg step he had in his stride, he's now condensed it. And that's one of the things he says has not only helped with his overall timing, but Mark Sweeney, you can expand on this. The rhythm in his hands, Phil Plantier says, has also made a huge difference in that. And that's one of the reasons you've seen him lately being able to square up the fastball. So explain the rhythm in the hands, how that all connects with the stride that he had. Well, it's all about getting knocks. <laughs> That's right, and he just does squirt that one high enough that Herrera's lead doesn't get to it. So the Padres have the leadoff man on for the first time. Well, it's all about rhythm with the hands and the lower half. And I think Jesus Guzman has limited that leg kick. And the timing aspect is right on. He's driving through the baseball. And a little bit of luck goes a long way for Jesus Guzman. But the upper half and the lower half are working in tandem. Logan Forsyth takes ball one. He's walked him line to left. Perhaps getting that leadoff man on will help the Padres stir up some trouble here in the bottom of the seventh. Well, Logan squared it up last time. Takes 2 and 0. Oh. He walked the first time and lined out sharply to Dickerson and left. Last time up. Fouled at the plate. Well, for Logan Forsyth watching him on this last road trip, it looked like the game just got a little too quick for him. He needs to slow it down a little bit. Don't get into pull mode. Just square balls up. If you're lining him to left field, you'll start finding those holes with your consistency. Big hole right side. Hilton holding on the runner. And LeMayhew over near second in double play position. And three and one. There's a big opportunity, three and one. Padres need runners. Bell Island Brothers getting ready for Colorado. Again, this is the farthest that Tyler Chatwood has pitched in any game this year, his 11th start. And ball four. Logan Forsyth walks for the second time tonight. The only two walks offered by Chadwick. Well, the challenge for Walt Weiss, the manager of the Rockies, is going to be how Tyler, Tyler Chatwood adjusts to that hard ground ball by Everett Cabrera. He had to sit for an inning, then go out there. And that is very difficult. And that's the reason why you see two guys. Warming up in the Rockies bullpen, but credit the Padres for two solid at bats leading off the inning. Jim Wright, the pitching coach, out to talk with Chad Wood as Joe Thatcher and Dale Thayer getting ready for the Padres. Pitcher's spot is a couple away. Will Venable with two on and no one out. Now, this is when Bud Black has to be creative as a manager of the National League. All hands on deck. This is the time where you have to take some chances. You see Chris Tenorfia getting loose, a couple of bats. Rick Renteria behind Bud Black, making sure that they are having constant communication with the bench players. Tenorfia getting ready, anticipating that they might bring in a left hander. Should they decide to relieve Chatwood? Ball one. He's suddenly well off the mark, not well, just missing, but missing. Widely looks very uncomfortable on the mound. Guzman with a single, Forsyth a walk. That's a strike. A uh, changeup. So four nothing Colorado. The Padres a base runner away from bringing the tying run to the plate here in the seventh. Another off speed. One and two.
Padres with only four hits, three singles and a double by Headley. A couple of walks, Forsythe earning both of those. He's at first, Guzman at second. Swing and a miss. Who went to three straight off speed pitches and strikes out Venable. Well, let's take a look at the sequence to Will Venable. That fastball away. He goes to the breaking ball, and that's the changeup right there. Then the Gerd curveball. And then he finishes him off with another curveball down out of the zone. Very effective by Tyler Chatwood. Understanding fastball command's not there. He went to his secondary stuff to get Venable. So one out. And Rene Rivera called back, and Kristen Orfia is going to hit for Rivera. Rene in his uh, debut with the Padres, grounded out and struck out. Welcome back to the big leagues. Nothing wrong with that. He made it to the big leagues again. Now he can take a breath. Very difficult game, but he got back to the big leagues. He's going to help the Padres. Donorfia used primarily against left handed pitching, but in this situation, comes up there against the righty Chetwood. Chris is one for nine as a pinch hitter and takes low. You see Nick Hunley on deck. Having to go into the game, that's what you do. You put the catcher in that pitcher's position. Big situation for the Padres. Pops him up, shallow and right. Kadir coasts in under it, and there's two away. And Hundley will be introduced. Two out, two on. Huntley yesterday was hit by a pitch. He walked, singled one for three. Had a couple of singles the game before. All well struck. Only his third pinch hit appearance of the season. He's 0 for 2. Well, with the 50 game suspension by Yasmani Grandal, Nick Huntley opened as the number one catcher. Then mentally, he had to go on the bench and spot start. Now he's a starter again. Tells you the rigors of mentally draining through this baseball game. Nick Huntley has second life. Swings at the first pitch, a soft roller to second, the throw to first, no throw, it's a base hit. He cued that one off the head of the bat and it just kept spinning away from second baseman LeMahieu. Hardly hit with any force, but terrific direction and a lot of English. Infield hit. So the bases are loaded. Now this is, it's right off the end of the bat, and credit Nick Hunley for placement. But good hitting style right there with good balance. And credit DJ LeMahieu going. Far into that hole because if that gets by him, that's a run scored. Big so situation for Everett Cabrera. So Guzman goes to third, Forsyth to second. Hundley joins them at first. The Padre over every pillow. Cabrera, 0 for 3 tonight. Hit it hard the last time. A smash right back to the mound. That clipped the pitcher Chatwood on the ankle. Well, this is when emotion comes into the game. You hear the crowd getting involved. Your concentration level picks up. And this is a big at bat for Everett Cabrera. Did not go. And the count is 2 0. Oh. Well, credit Everett Cabrera. As you can see, the three guys on base loaded with Padres. But Cabrera taking a breaking ball out of the zone and a changeup just off the plate. Now he's in the hitter's count. Four home runs this year. And ball three. Chadwick thought he had a strike.
And now the pressure on the 23 year old right hander to throw strikes or throw the Padres a run. 4 nothing. Well, this is the take for Abbott Cabrera. Gotta make him throw a strike. Maybe two. And it's way inside. The Padres get a run. Guzman jogs in from third. It's 4 to 1. Everybody moves up. Forsyth to third. Hundley to second. Cabrera with an RBI. His 25th at first base carrying the tying run. And Walt Boyce is uh, going to make a pitching change. Chetwood saw him coming, quickly turned his back. Upset with himself, as you might understand. You have to wonder whether or not that being struck in the ankle affected him. He certainly wasn't quite the same pitcher that he was prior to that smash by Cabrera. So, uh, excellent effort by Tyler Chadwood, but he leaves the game with the bases loaded. Colorado leading 4 1. Rockies and Padre fans join us tomorrow at 630 for social media Tuesday. We'll be focusing on insider tips of who to follow to fully utilize Twitter as a Padres fan. For those that are new to Twitter including myself the hardest part is just finding the good accounts to follow. We'll help by letting you who we follow. For those that are already utilizing Twitter, we'll ask them to tweet their favorite accounts to follow and why using hashtag Padres Social. As a bonus, we'll have Megan O'Levy interview the Padres special guests. That's going to be a jam packed Tuesday night here at Petco Park with Taco Tuesday. Yeah, dog days. We're going to have uh, five, six hundred dogs parade around the warning path before the game on this Petco turf. So Rex Brothers, who has been outstanding all year, he's allowed just four earned runs all season in 35 and a third innings, making his 40th appearance. And Padre manager Bud Black counters. He's going to pinch hit for Alexei Amarista, bring up a right-handed hitter, Kyle Blanks. Bases loaded, four to one the score. Blanks with a chance to do some serious damage. But he chops one wide a third. The throw to second. No, not a throw. First, not in time. Third baseman Arenado thought he would get the runner at second, but hustling hard to deny any possible play was Cabrera. So he had no play at second. By the time he wheeled and threw to first, Blanks with his speed beats it out, and the Padres get a run. Well, credit Kyle Blanks from getting out of the box and putting his head down, but take a look at Everett Cabrera busting his butt to second base. He did not have a play at second because of that hustle. And Kyle Blanks getting down the line. And that brings up Chase Headley batting right handed. He doubled hitting left handed the last time up. Well, there's another look at the play, and you can see he wanted to go to second base, but Everett Cabrera hustling to second base. 
And Blanks, meanwhile, pumping his way up that first baseline to beat the throw. Didn't give up on it thinking the throw was going to be to second. Now that's what we're talking about and even on the road trip the Padres and it, it draws admiration from opposing teams and managers. They play hard and it pays off here. Now 4 2 bases still loaded. They're a single away from tying it. And a foul back. Good cut by Headley. The run charge to Chatwood. Tyler Chatwood understands that he's one swing away from not having a decision in this game. Eighth man to bat in the inning, Headley. Hundley at third, Cabrera at second, the tying run. Go ahead, score blanks at first. Well, that last pitch was right in the wheelhouse of Chase Headley. Yeah, but big swing by Chase Headley. You don't need a big swing now. He's got to put the barrel of the base bat on the baseball. Outside, two and one. This is the action pitch. Rex Brothers wants to throw a strike, and Chase Headley ready to give it a rip. Man in the middle, Cabrera carrying the tying run. Oh, another good swing. Two and two. You know you're getting a power fastball by Rex, Rex Brothers. And another foul. He didn't go to the fastball from a slider. Base is loaded. Two out here in the seven. Two runs in. 4 2 Colorado and the 2 2 pitch. Right center field and it's falling. No, into the glove of LeMayhew. Didn't get much on that. Went off the bat. Looked like it might have a chance. That's the Padres on three hits. Pick up two runs to cut the lead in half. Four two as we move to the top of the eighth inning, and here's our fan Diego, fan of the game. Young man <laughs> posing, unknowing that he's on television. Well, while we have a chance, speaking of youngsters, Ali McCune 
a 10 year old from Ramona sang the national anthem and what a great job she did prior to the game tonight. Make all of her hometown of Ramona. That was outstanding. Proud. I think she got a standing O. All right, Dale Thayer to work the eighth inning. Arenado, Colvin, and Herrera scheduled for the Rockies. Arenado, 0 for 3, scored after he was safe on a fielder's choice in the sixth inning. When the Rockies scored the two runs that are the difference now. That one to Headley on a big hop as he closes the hole, throws him out. Tyler Colvin, the only hit in the sixth inning when the Rockies scored their two runs. A little soft single down the left field side. Yeah, 3 0 count. Tried to pull it to right. Looked down the left field line. He dumped it there. That hurt. The Norfolk stays in the game and right with Venable moving from right to center field. And Hunley, of course, in the game behind the plate. Dale Thayer on the mound, third pitcher used tonight. Volquez Brock did a good job. Five batters, five outs. Three of them strikeouts. Two strikes, the count on Colvin. Last of the eighth inning, the Padres will have the middle three up Quentin, Guzman, and Forsyth. Backs him off the plate, 94. Nice fluid motion from Thayer. Forty second appearance for Thayer. Posing hitters batting only 197 against Thayer, the best of any Padre hurler. Strike three right at the knees. Two away. Hey, Padre fans, famed car customizer Ryan Friedlinghaus and his crew at West Coast Customs can you continue to take common vehicles from ordinary to extraordinary in West Coast Customs. Each episode brings viewers inside one of the most dynamic car shops in the world. Don't miss a new episode this Sunday. I dare you to say his name five times. <laughs> That's that would be fun. We'll save that one for Mark Grant when he comes back. <laughs> Jonathan Herrera singled, fly to left, and was involved in that key play. A safety squeeze with Herrera up uh, in the sixth inning. Herrera was credited with an RBI and a sacrifice. And Volk has an error when he fielded the ball and tried to flip it with his glove to the catcher, and it just didn't work. And that created a big run and then the next better up Dickerson after the pitcher applied to left field for a sacrifice fly and it was for nothing. Well, Nolan Arenado at third base did not take off with the with the pitch thrown. That's the reason why it was sacrifice and it wasn't a squeeze safety squeeze you have to read the ball but he took off as he delivered the pitch but it was late. Maybe the timing was off. Three and two now to Herrera. Playing shortstop with uh, Troy Twilowitzki with that broken rib still on the shelf, but just about to return. Ground ball up the middle by Forsyth. So Herrera filling in with two singles, a sacrifice, and an RBI. Nine hits for the Rockies tonight. And Charlie Blackman just called up from Colorado Springs, the Triple A farm team of the Rockies, and he makes an immediate appearance. He was activated from the minors, hitting 288 with the three homers. When Roy Oswald was placed on the DL with the right hamstring. He 
was up for the club big club last year. Marla with any guy off the bench you got to look for that fastball. Dale Thayer likes throwing the fastball he's proud of it. But he's seen some pretty good breaking balls from Dale Thayer this inning. Former Yellow Jacket at Georgia Tech. It's been up uh, each of the last two years. 200 at bats plus and hitting around 270. See if he elevates a fastball again right here or goes to the breaking ball. Looks like he's going to elevate another one. Uh, back out of play. Actually got it down on the inside corner. So he didn't waste that fastball. You could see the setup by Nick Hundley. He wanted that up. Let's try to climb the ladder. Again, trying to climb the ladder. And another foul back. Herrera, good runner at first base. Two outs here in the eighth. One and two. Quiet man from Chico State. Dale Thayer. Another foul. Well, tomorrow night, folks, 6.30 here on Fox Sports San Diego, game two of the series. Eric Stoltz, and you'll get to hear from Eric on the postgame show tonight. Julius Chassin, he's 8-3 and three for Colorado, just as it was in Washington. The Rockies' top three pitchers are going to work against the Padres in the series. Chatwood, Chassin, and then De La Rosa. The runner goes. Throw by Hundley, not even close. He yanked that one wide. And an easy steal for Herrera. Well, I thought this was a good pitch and you see the location. Maybe he got blocked out of that pitch. Phil Cuzzy the home plate umpire. That did look like it was a two seamer coming right over the inside corner. Well, take a look at Fox tracks by Southland technology that number seven. Just on the edge. Sometimes you get blocked out if that catcher comes up throwing. Second steal for Herrera. Another foul ball. Blackman. Well, the location of those pitches. You can see Dale Thayer pumping those fastballs in. Work the edge on one, but predominantly up in and in, in. To Blackman. Doesn't throw many breaking balls, does he? Occasional slider. And another foul. That one was off speed. If he goes to that fastball in low, well, he's set up away. And a chopper to second. Easy play for Forsyth. That's it for the Rockies in the eighth. Padres made two to tie, and Carlos Quentin will be leading off the bottom of the eighth.
And welcome back. Bottom of the eighth inning, a 4 2 Rockies lead, and a new pitcher for Colorado is Matt Belisle. The Rockies have the BBs out there in their bullpen. Brothers Belisle and Benton Court. Well, with Matt Belisle, it's a four pitch mix fastball, slider, curve, and change. He doesn't use his change too many times to right handers. He is a true workman, and first pitch is fouled away by Quinton. This is his. 41st appearance of the season. Last year, Belisle entered 80 games. And he has been in more games the last three years than any major league pitcher. So he's got a rubber arm, the 33 year old from Austin, Texas. Sure, Walt Weiss loves that. You got to have a guy in the bullpen that'll take the ball. They stick their hand out, say, Give me the ball. This is what a situation I want to be in. Weak swing. And the breaking pitch by Quentin. The slider. Quentin, Guzman, Forsyth. With the Padres trailing here in the eighth inning, 4 2. Carlos lined out, singled, and grounded to short tonight. High fly ball, right center. Not deep enough. Kadire with a catch. For the first down. Brings up Guzman. As a single and three at bats. Belisle since 2010. This is his 271st game. Leading all major league pitchers. That slider. As Guzman chasing. Inside with a fastball. Caught the corner. Why is it when we talk about the slider pitch? It's usually right handers. You don't. You know, not a lot of left handers throw a slider. I mean. Yeah. I guess you could call Joe Thatcher's a big slider. Way outside, strike three. Well, Tyler Chatwood, the 23 year old right hander from Redlands, California, he was outstanding early. Got in a little trouble after he was hit in the ankle by a smash off the bat of Cabrera. But he worked uh, six and two thirds, allowed two runs, five hits. Edison Volk has gave up a two run double early after a walk and an infield hit Rosario knocked in two and it was two nothing. And uh, they picked up another two runs on wildness by Volquez two walks an error by Edinson and a single produced two runs in the sixth to make it four nothing before the Padres got two in their last half of the seventh. Forsyth has walked twice tonight and lined to left. Solid at bats by Logan Forsyth tonight. That 0 for 1, a line out to left. 2 and 0. There's the strike at 90. Well, with a 2 0 count, as you can see, Houston Street warming up in the bullpen. 2 0 count, a borderline pitch for a strike. I like that by Logan Forsyth. That he didn't swing at it. Exactly. Now 2 and 2, another fastball. Stay within your plan. Broken bat. One hopper Herrera. And the inning comes to an end as Bill Isle makes quick work of the Padres. One, two, three.
at Jack in the Box. Go big at a Jack in the Box near you with Jack's new Big Stack Burger. By Petco, where the healthy pets go. And by your San Diego County Lexus dealer, who invites you to test drive a luxurious Lexus automobile today. Top of the ninth inning here at Petco Park, and Houston Street comes in to face the top of the order. Corey Dickinson, DJ LeMayhew, and Michael Kadire. Well, we hope you've made your ticket plans. We told you we'd tell you a little bit about what's coming up. You've got uh, Wednesday, it's Cashner against De La Rosa. Terrific pitching matchup. Thursday is college night. You college guys and gals uh, show your proper ID and uh, right field seats are yours for $10. And then Friday night will be a retro against the San Francisco Giants. The PCL uniforms will be worn by the Padres and 25,000 of you will get a Padre Fedora and there's fireworks after the game. So big night on Friday and then Saturday's the smartphone giveaway 25,000. So Thursday Friday Saturday Sunday against the Giants something happening every day. I'm looking forward to those PCL uniforms. I'd like a little touch of red in there. I like it. They have a example in the the lobby of Petco Park here and it, you can't help but take a good look at it. It's very handsome. Dickerson. Playing left field for Cargo Gonzalez, who is uh, suffering from a bruised middle finger on his right hand, so sitting out tonight. And he's contributed. He's walked the first inning, came around to score on Rosario's double. After he popped up, he singled the left in the fifth and delivered a sacrifice fly in the sixth inning, the fourth run scored by the Rockies tonight. 24 year old from Mississippi. Takes a strike there from Houston Street, two and one. Gonzalez on his way to the All Star game as a starter. 24 home runs leading the National League. And he's tied for the lead in outfield assists. He's the complete deal. Two and two. Now, good fastball by Houston Street. And Dickerson comes out shaking his right hand as if he. Pinched his hand taking that swing. Well, that top hand can rotate over on these pitches that are out away from the left hander. That's how you can get your finger caught up in that swing. It just rotates all over, and then the bottom hand takes the brunt of it. Two and two. Struck him out. One away to DJ LeMayhew. Well, Houston Street gets 2 0 and comes pumping in three strikes. Good to see aggressive by Houston Street. Aggressive down and away. Darren Balsley, the pitching coach, loves that. LeMayhew is 0 for 4 on the night, including a double play. Just off the plate. With Kadir to be next. Looking ahead to the Padre ninth inning, it'll be Venable, Denorfia, and Hundley. Went around one and one. Good slider by Houston Street. Working off of that fastball. And there's Rafael Betancourt, the closer for the Rockies. Apparently, we'll see him in the ninth. A oh, good break. Good location. That's what Houston Street needs. Another slider. And it's one and two. See the rotation on that ball. Good shot by our cameraman. Houston Street relies on location, not velocity. Misses with a fastball. Hump that one up there at 91. Back to the mound. One three. So tomorrow night, 6:30 here on Fox Sports San Diego, the veteran Eric Stoltz will try to level his record at seven and seven. 
Tough customer for the Rockies, Julius Chassin. He's 8 and 3 with a 3.74 ERA. So the lefty Saltz against the righty Chassin. Hope you'll join us. And uh, we hope those of you that have already made ticket plans will enjoy pop reaction here at Petco. First pitch to Kadir is a strike. Well, Eric Steltz is going to join our post game tonight. Stay with us. Mike Pomeranz, Andy Ashby. Mild mannered Hoosier. Went to Little Bethel College there in northern Indiana where he was not only a pitcher but a hitting star. He's shown his prowess as a hitter. One and one. And two balls and a strike to Kadir, who has an infield hit and a sharp single to center in his four at bats. That won't hurt the 337 average. Center field. Venable. Easy chance. Street works uh, one, two, three, ninth inning. Here come the Padres. They need two to tie. Venable will lead it on. Your star of the game, young Tyler Chatwood. Almost got through seven innings, a little trouble in the seventh. Gave up two runs and five hits, walked three and struck out four. And he showed an excellent fastball and a sharp breaking curve. So Tyler Chatwood, our Carl's Jr. star of the game. Well, the rally hats in position. Venable will face Rafael Betancourt. Bettencourt missed about a month, was injured. He leads the team in saves with 11. 218 batting average tells you he's tough to hit. Or why not tonight for the Padres? This would be a huge boost to snatch this away and give credit where credit's due. Tyler Chatworth did his job for the Rockies. But a no decision would be pretty sweet for the Padres. Padres trying to snap that nine game losing streak. Colorado has won only two games of their last 13. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the San Diego Padres and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the San Diego Padres. Let me uh, correct that Mark Swinney. Uh, the Rockies have lost eight of their last ten. Padres with nine straight. So one of these two teams will try to make a U turn, turn around, take uh, that winning highway. But the Padres have to come up with a rally, and it'll be Will Venable to start it. He has lined to short, singled, and struck out. 
Denorfia entered the game as a pinch hitter in the seventh inning. He'll be next, and Hundley also coming in in the seventh will bat third, and then the top of the order. He gets it. No, didn't get it by Betancourt. Had he been able to drag it a little harder, that's a base hit. Betancourt able to field, one away. We need to get somebody on there to bring the tying run to the plate. Here's Denorfia. Wide to right as a pinch hitter in the seventh. Betancourt is uh, deliberate with a capital D, especially with men on base. To say the least. <laughs> He's the snail. Ball at 90. He goes to his cap three or four times before every pitch. Out of play. It's already gone to it once. Let's just see how many times. Two. Something about the tip three. Bill four. One more time. Yeah, five. Six, six, seven. <laughs> Ahead on the count. Two strikes to Denorfio. Slices that one foul. That'll be out of play away from Kadire. Sound like he needed another bat. I want to check that. He knows better than I do. Twitchy itchy. Staring down to Norfia and now ready to go. Two strikes. Change up. Well, for Betancourt, it's fastball, curveball, change, with predominantly fastball, curveball to the right handed hitters. And usually that curveball is exactly that. It's out of the strike zone. Gives the impression that it's that fastball away. That 12 to 6 break down in the dirt. See from Fox Tracks, number four by Southland Technology. That's that breaking ball in the dirt. And another. Did not go two and two. Well, here's this 12 to 6 breaking ball, and Chris Norfia tries to see it late. Holds up on the check swing. Center field chasing Colvin back, 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 and off the base of the wall into second base to Norfia. That'll bring the tying run to the plate. Great piece of hitting by Chris. Down 0 and 2 in the count, did not fish for a couple of breaking balls low, and rifles that one off the 396 sign. Well, take a look at handling the barrel of the bat by Chris to Norfia. This ball runs in, and it's a mistake by Betancourt. But credit to Chris Norfia driving that baseball, and you can see it, this was hit perfectly. Boy, Stays missed a home run by about five uh, inches. And that was a gorgeous swing by Chris Norfia. Exactly what the Padres needed, and emotion by the fans. That brings up Hundley. So, 4-2 Colorado lead. Padres trying to come up with something here in the last of the ninth. Hundley, an infield hit. Remember he squirted one off the head of the bat that just curled its way between Hilton and LeMahieu out on the outfield grass for a hit. 
Uh, one of those two hits a home run. Starts him with a slider and a strike. Cabrera on deck. Curveball, and it's one and one. Four for six his last six official at bats. Oh, he had a good cut. He had a fastball. Well, we saw it in Colorado, Dick. The no doubles defense played by the Colorado Rockies, and that was to the Padres' benefit, as you can see. One, two, three, all the way back. They're out there. They're tough to find, and they certainly open up a lot of room for a single in front of them in order to protect. And it's almost ridiculously deep. You, you would find it hard to hit one over Kadir's head. Well, I understand the reasoning, but you still have to be athletic, and anything hit over their heads, probably going to be out of the out of the park. Went out double by Denorfia. And another foul. A good swing by Nick. Cabrera looks as if he'll get a chance. Struck him out on a high fastball out of the strike zone. No oh, two away, and it's up to Cabrera. Well, eleve elevated fastball by Nick. That's frustrating. Cabrera has grounded out twice to short. Smashed one back to the mound. That was the ball that hit Chatwood in the four leg ankle. Then he walked with the bases loaded the last time up to knock in a run. And he's had some success against Bettencourt. Including a home run. Now this is the Padres all star. And a big moment of the game. Ball one. Kyle Blanks was used as a pinch hitter and was able to deliver an infield hit RBI. The pitcher spot is next, and Mark Kotze getting ready. The dirt 2 and 0. Oh. This is where Bettencourt really slows it down. Not that he isn't slow with the base is empty. Now, a good job by Everett Cabrera slowing the game down, staying in the zone. This is where he's really grown up in this game. The big situations and his concentration level. That's a strike. Cabrera with two outs and runners in scoring position this year, hitting a robust 385. Right man at the right time. Two and one the count. No. 
So three and one outside. A fan out there with a Katze <laughs> likeness. Well, they want Katze to have a chance. So do I. If Katze gets a chance, the he'll represent the winning run. Three and one to Cabrera. He can afford to be very patient and selective here. Padres need another base runner. And he walks. Tying run on. Winning run comes to the plate in the form of Mark Conce. On June 9th against the Rockies, Conce in Colorado with a home run. So he knows the way. Are we asking too much for him to do it again? Yeah, that fan doesn't think so. <laughs> So two on Denorfia with a one out double a two out walk Cabrera who's walked the last two times and here's Katze. Good success against Betancourt four for nine. You saw in Colorado came as a pinch hitter and is his only home run this year. You can see the defense still and no double depth. And with Everett Cabrera's speed, if he hits a ball over the infielders, could get interesting. And if he finds a gap, especially. Ball one. Hilton playing very deep at first base right on the line. Can't say. Would be impossible to drive one past Hilton as he's going steady with a foul line. Look at the big hole on the right side. So much room all over the place. I know it's a philosophy, but I don't understand it at times. The North at second. Cabrera the tying run at first here. Two outs in the ninth. That'll be a strike. Right at the bottom of the strike zone. Katze was. Taken that thinking it was 2 0, oh, but Fox Track shows that uh, it was a good call. Well, for Mark Kotze, he's got to look for something he can drive. That's not a pitch he can drive, that's a pitcher's pitch. Last walkoff homer nine years ago. And 2 and 1. In this situation, you got to eliminate that changeup. I know he throws one. It's fastball. React to that breaking ball in the strike zone. Left field. Uh, Dickerson is there, and the ball game is over. The Padres have run up an imperfect 10. 10 losses in a row. And the Rockies, a hard earned 4 2 victory to open this homestand. Final again, Colorado 4, San Diego 2. Stay tuned. Fox Sports San Diego, the postgame show, and Mike Pomerantz. So, Dick, coming up,